Good evening YouTubers and welcome to Fun Electronics Today. Today I'm going to show you how I created this very precise thermometer with the university math that I never used. During my university years I had a lot of special mathematics classes and back then I was really able to picture a real instance of when these hypothetical mathematical formulas would apply in real life and I would need them. Back then we were studying a course named the Theory of Systems and its main purpose was to teach us how to interpret what's inside of a black box based on only the input function and the output function which are measurable and then we had to determine the transfer function or to find the closest mathematical model that would cause that response. I've been playing with these microcontrollers for many years now. In the years 2000 when I had to create a thermometer using assembly code, I was usually including a conversion chart in the software, meaning that for every red value returned by the AD converter, I was assigning a temperature value. I was always including the external thermistor into a voltage divider and I was reading a voltage on the input pin. This software return value had to be something between 0 and 1023 and if for instance I was reading a value of 485, the PC registry of my microcontroller was going into the chart at the respective value and it was returning the temperature value of 22.41 Celsius. This was a very meticulous job and since I was also using some old thermistors with no datasheet, I sometimes had to sample the values of the thermistor myself and to create the software conversion chart by hand. After a few years when the technology evolved and the C++ microcontroller started to be very cheap and available to the masses, I realized for the first time that I can embed the transfer function of the thermistor into the software of the device. This is not only saving me the time to calculate and create the conversion chart by hand, but it can also calculate floating point results with an astonishing precision and a very large number of decimals. I then inserted the Steinhardt and Hart equation into the code and once I had the transfer function there, magic started to happen. For the first time in my life I was able to apply in a real manner all these things I have once learned about transfer functions during special math classes. I use deep trace for both the schematic and the layout. Once the layout is completed, I export everything into Gerber's and I send the files away to a PCB manufacturer. So I contacted PCBWay.com for helping me with the PCBs and they are the official sponsors of this video. They can ship worldwide and they even delivered to my temporary location in Papua New Guinea. The communication with them was great and their PCBs are state of the art. PCB Way also organizes a lot of other activities like this 2020 Christmas shopping festival with contests and prizes which runs until the 31st of December. Once I received the PCBs through mail, I started assembling everything together.
Hi guys, this thing just finished printing, but I haven't removed it from the printer yet. Let's see if it fits. Uh, the filament finished midway and I had to splice it with this copper color. Doesn't actually look too bad. And I made it so that it will stay tilted a little bit on the back. There you go. So I didn't actually expect that it would fit so well. But it looks nice. This thing is already showing 29 Celsius degrees and it's really hot. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. But I'm in Papua New Guinea here and it's the rainy season and it gets really hot during the day. I'm not sweating too much because I've been living in this country for the past 4 years now. But now seeing this actually makes me think that it's hotter than it is. 